Well, it's a perfect vehicle for a, a show like this in the sense that it's rooted in an actual Royal Navy expedition that went missing. And we do have some clues from archaeological expeditions that have found little bits and pieces, a bone here, a tin can here, that you can sort of imagine the general narrative of what must have happened, but we're missing so many answers. And just recently, in the last few years, they've found both ships while we were prepping and shooting the show that have provided still more clues, but even while fewer answers. While you were answers. prepping and shooting the show, the ships were found. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. We planned it. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> it's a real marketing <laughs> coup. press. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that like? I mean, you're in the, does that change what you're writing or what you're doing? when the ships get found because there's new evidence or there's new stories to tell? Yeah, a lot of set photos of us include us just writing away on laptops or checking Google trying to figure out how to update scenes up to the moment we shot them to reflect what they were finding in real life. And it's interesting because the ships were found based on the testimonies of Inuits, the Inuit testimonies, which were discarded for many... For, we could have found these ships earlier if people had listened to the Inuits. And actually the gentleman, the Inuit... Um, there's an Inuit hunter recently who helped away. find, who just passed yeah. away. Terror would never have been found without this person's help. And so it, it really made us, it gratified, because Dave and I put so much research into the Inuit storyline as well, and it gave that their testimony a lot more weight, because we knew that they actually knew what had happened to the ships. 